In this video, we're going to be setting up a shop for our Godot ARPG. We're going to come over to our friend Nick and we're going to be able to buy some things from him. Let's go and have a look at how we can get that done. If you've been following along, your current code base is probably fine. But if you want to grab the uh, seed for this one, you're going to want to get the EXP complete zip from my GitHub. Or if you want to just get the complete code from today, you're going to want to grab the shops.zip from I have GitHub. been updating assets and I'm trying to update them in the GitHub and the itch as well. But if anything's not matching on your screen to what is on mine, maybe go and just check around and see if I've updated anything uh, on either of those. For this platforms. particular lesson though, you're going to want the shop.png and saintnick.png um, files in particular. Start out in our world scene this time. So grab your world uh, root node, click on the plus, and the node we're going to be adding is an area, area 2D node. And this area 2D we can call Saint Nick. So Saint Nick is going to be our, uh, let's call him our shop assistant, shall we? Now, this little area 2D, as with all area 2Ds, we get that little warning. So we need to give it a collision shape. And we also need to give it a Sprite 2D. So this Sprite 2D is going to act as just the thing to show us that uh, Saint Nick is there and we can walk over towards him. So let's find our Saint Nick.png with the underscore. And we're going to drag him over to that texture just like that. And here he is up here. So let's bring him down. I think maybe we'll pop him on this little hill here. That could be St. Nick's place there. Where's the rest of our Area 2D? I think I left it up there, didn't I? That was a bit silly. So let's grab our Area 2D, drag it down to the hill, realign our sprite on the hill. All right, and now let's sort out that collision shape. So select the collision shape node, go shape empty, give it a circle, for example, and a little bit of a range there. So this is gonna be the area where when our player enters it, it takes us to our shop. So we're gonna to need to signal this through. So reselect your Saint Nick node, head over and click on the node and then uh, body entered and connect it through to the script. Excellent, so let's have a look at our script now things we're going to need to update in our world scene which is where we signal that area 2d through just to make sure that we can re-enter the world scene in the correct place so up the top here we've got our current scene as world and change scene as false so what we want to do is add a little bit more up here so we're going to have our var scene path and we're going to set that to nothing at the moment and then we also want to be able to work out where our player is so we're going to create this on ready variable called player node and that's going to equal, we're going to get the node and what node, well, we want the node, actually, we can probably type it in, but uh, of our tile map slash player, there it is there. So get node tile map player. So that's our player node. So we're creating a, a variable for that node so we can uh, mess around with that later. In our uh, ready function, we want to do a couple of things as well, which is going to require us to do an update in our global script too. So let's just do it one at a time. So in our ready function, we're going to add in uh, this little bit here. Let me copy and paste. So what we're doing here is saying we want to um, have a check in our global script for this last overworld position. So we're going to go and double check, make sure we've got that all coded up um, uh, for vector two. And then uh, what we're having a look at here is our player node um, global position equals global last overall position plus vector 2, 10, 10. So this here is a little offset so that we don't reappear directly on the same spot that we left from because then we'd end up in an inf infinite loop, right? So we're checking whether or not that's happened. So if we go to our global script, you'll see that we um, haven't actually set up that at all yet. So what we actually need to add in is this little line here as a variable. So our var last overall position equals our vector two. That's all that needs to go in there. So let's save that. Let's go back to our world, make sure everything in there is up to scratch. So we've got our ready function sorted now. All right, so now we need to do a little bit in our process function, which we don't even have yet. So let's do that now. So what we're doing here 
is in our process function, we want to um, see if change scene is set to true. If it is, we want to, here's a little debug statement, say what we're attempting to change our scene to. Then we create a new variable called new scene resource, and we're gonna load that scene path. If there isn't one, then we're gonna say it failed to load that particular path and return. Then we've got a new variable here called new scene, and this is gonna be our new scene resource instantiated, so creating that new scene, and this is just handling what we do with our current one, we get rid of it. What do we do with the new one? We're gonna add it as a child, and then we change what our um, current scene is, and then we reset it to false. So that's what's happening through there. This bit here stays almost the same, but now change scenes is going to need, this one down here is going to need in a minute, an argument. So why don't we do that now? So let's have a look at how we're changing our change scenes function. So what's happening in this one is a little bit different. So have a look now. So var change scenes scene to change to. So we've got an argument now in this change scenes function, which is why we have an error up here. We haven't put it in. So we're gonna say our scene path is gonna be you know, our root directory there, plus our scene to change to string dot tscn. Then we're going to go our global last overall position equals play a node global position. So this is just making sure we're finding the right position, setting change scenes to true, and then just a print statement telling us what's going on there. So now we need to come up here to our change scenes where we're calling that change scenes, and we need to give it an argument um, for what the scene is going to be. So for our on cave body entered one, we're going to change it to cave like that, right? Um, if we have a look in our cave script, change current scene. So we've actually got that labeled up there, okay? So back down to our world. So that's that one for the cave setup. Um, what we And we've sorted out the change scenes function. So now we need to do our Saint Nick sort him out, okay? So what we're gonna do is paste in this little bit here, which is just the same as what we've done above for our on cave entered, but it's just slightly different. We've got a different scene here, okay? So we haven't, uh, have we made that scene yet? I don't even recall. No, I don't think we have. So that now is our updated world script where we're handling where our uh, player appears when we re-enter in that as well. So let's save what we've done there, take a breath and see what we need to do next. Set up that scene now that we're gonna transition to. So create a new scene just a node 2D, let's rename that node 2D, however, to Saint Nick, just to keep track of things. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by giving ourselves a texture rect as a child node of that node 2D. And the texture we're gonna throw in there is shop.png that we've hopefully already downloaded. There it is there, let me just stretch that out a little bit so it fits. All right, and there is the basis for our scene. It's gonna be a flat 2D image, but we can bring it to life with a little bit of creativity. So let's add in here a button. And this particular button is going to be, we're only gonna bother setting up one of these today, all right? So we're gonna set this one up for say our 4X. Um, actually, if we use a texture rect instead, uh, sorry, a texture button instead, it might uh, just be a better idea. So let's do that instead. Textured uh, button, all right, there it is there. Drag it down, because we already have our image underneath. So now it just uh, doesn't sort of show up. So there's that one. I think we also need an exit button. So just a normal old button this time, and it's gonna have the word exit in it. Let's uh, pop that over in this corner here, perhaps. Um, what else do we need? Well, we're gonna need to add our player to the scene as well. Um, otherwise it's gonna be a bit boring. So grab your player scene and drag it up and drop it in. You don't need to worry about where he is or anything like that. Um, but that's so that we're actually in the game as well. All right, so now we need to signal a few things through to our script that we haven't even made yet. So click on our root node, let's create a script, call it Saint Nick like that. Now we want to signal our button through. So node, button pressed, connect. And we also want to signal uh, the texture button through, pressed, connect. Excellent. So those are now through. We've got that button and that button connected. So the next step, of course, is to keep working on that script. 
that. So let's save our um, scene as saintnick.tscn um, and then let's go and work on that script. So click on the script view and you should be greeted with this very boring script. So we're going to work on this, but I'm not going to type everything in because as you know, I am a terrible typist. So we're going to copy and paste a few things. So what we're going to do to start with is very similar to our other scenes. This is just our gear to make sure that we're handling um, all the different uh, scene change items. So that's what's happening there. So var change scene is false, current scene is Saint Nick, scene path. And then we're also grabbing our player node, which is there. All right, in our, pr uh, we don't have a ready function. We're not gonna need that one. But in our process function, we're gonna need to have all of that scene changey stuff. So let's throw that in again here, like so. So if we're changing scene, all the exact same stuff as what we put into the uh, world scene before. Now let's come down to our buttons. So we're only setting up one of them. You can work the others out. So let's work out our, um, our texture button first, because that was the one for our item. So here's what we've got here. So I've just set it up and called it cost of potion because let's try and pretend that that's what we're doing. Um, so on texture button pressed, we're going to say what is how the amount they're worth. So variable cost of potion equals five. If global durries is greater than the cost of potion, then global durries take away the cost of the potion. We're going to grab that resource, the 4x resource. We're going to preload it. Um, and then we're going to basically create a new one, load it the texture for it, add it to our inventory, um, update the inventory, print whether it uh, worked or not, and also print whether we have enough money or not. So that's the full walkthrough of what's happening there. And then our exit button is um, gonna be a bit basic compared to that. There it, oops, there it is there. It's just setting our change scenes to true, actually I can stay there, change scenes to true and which, which scene we're changing to, which is the world um, scene. That should work, shouldn't it? Why is that giving me trouble? Change scenes, not for, oh. Because we haven't set up the change scenes function, silly. So let's also do that. So down the bottom here, we also need our change scenes function too. And that should make that error go away. There we go. So that is our Saint Nick script. You're gonna to need to add a few more buttons, um, put in your own artwork, etc., cetera. Um, and then you can basically make that work for the whole thing. Brilliant, so let's save what we've done there. I think all we've got left to do is add our UI into our Saint Nick scene, otherwise we won't be able to add anything to it. So what do we call it? It was just our inventory scene. There it is there, inventory scene. So I'm gonna drag that into the Saint Nick scene. Let's have a look in our 2D view. That's shown up fine. All right, I reckon we're pretty much there now, guys. So let's go and give it a play test and see what we get. Yes, yes. All right, so grab a uh, head up, we're in. Might need to do a little bit of tweaking here for our inventory with our new resources actually, but we'll get to that. So we can buy another one, we can buy multiples, brilliant. All right, that is all working. There's a few things we need to work on with our inventory, but that's not the point of this. This is a simple, simple setup to get you moving. So there we go. Well, let's uh, have a look at our must main might so you know exactly what you want to uh, need to get done and we can tweak those settings later on. What you must get done is adding that Area 2D and St. Nick Sprite to the world and updating that world script, including all of the location stuff. Uh, you also need to add uh, St. Nick, the, the St. Nick scene and set up his scene and script. Um, you may like to also set up those other slots, obviously, in your shop with extra buttons and change the artwork and do your own thing there. And maybe start thinking about different characters because I want to get to adding in a character selection You should now have a shop to buy supplies for Next time, we're going to have a look at starting our day-night cycle. And the in quote our I want to leave you with this week is from George Bernard Shaw. And he once said, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.